Since the debut of the 2017 Ryzen 1000 series featuring the first generation of Zen, AMD have been on a mission to constantly innovate and improve the performance utilizing various methods and technologies. With the first generation of Zen, they doubled the core count versus its Intel contemporaries. For example, the i7-7700K uh, featured 8 cores, 16 threads, and, well, the Ryzen 7 CPUs such as the 1700X has doubled this. Since then, the mission has continued, utilizing technologies such as chiplets, vCache, and lots of other stuff besides to continue to push the performance envelope. For future generations of Zen processors, Zen 5 and beyond, I feel that this trend will continue, and AMD will lean very heavily into not only accelerators, but the big dot little or hybrid processor designs, and I suspect that this will even find its way into the desktop. So then, in this video, I want to discuss with you guys some Zen 5 updates. We're going to go into the specifications as well as some release windows um, that I've been hearing about, and also some tentative details about Zen 6, and also upcoming APUs such as Sarlacc, which quite honestly have the potential to render the lower-end discrete uh, GPUs that you would find in mobile devices in particular null and void. And of course, we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I know we've covered Zen 5 extensively several times over the past few months. I want to give you some updates both in terms of release date and performance. So here you can see a previous slide where I go over IPC, core counts and the like. Since then I've had another great source which basically provides some caveats and further insight. So, Granite Ridge info from the new source, again, 16 cores and SMT2. I really feel that this is a lock at this stage. CCD, unsurprisingly, is 8 cores. L1 is 80 kilobytes per core. L2 remains at 1 megabyte, as does the size of L3 remain consistent versus the previous generation. 170 watt TDP, and the clock frequency is up to 6 gigahertz. More on that in a moment, and IPC 19% on average. So, at this stage, given the number of sources who claim to me as well as other rumors circulating online that Zen 5's core count will just remain at 16, I think at this stage it's almost certainly a lock. One megabyte of L2 cache per core, L1 rising from 64 to 80 per core, and unsurprisingly as well, SMT2 will also remain. Power consumption up to 170 watts, again, no surprises there. It's not a shock. This is again consistent with what we've seen AMD do with previous generations. Going by AMD's own official slide for Zen 5, although certainly it doesn't go into exhaustive detail, I think a lot of this is starting to make sense. As you probably spotted from my previous slide, the combination of my sources basically is explaining some elements more extensively there, such as AI and ML being FP16 AVX512. Early targets, and I stress this could either be wrong or just not make it into retail production silicon because, well, it's not at that stage yet. More on that when we get to the release date. Shows up to 6 gigahertz is potentially possible, but I feel at this point a realistic target is 5.8 to 5.9 gigahertz. Many of my sources have said that it's going to be a small bump relative to Ryzen 7000, but most of the gains for Zen 5 are going to be IPC. Again, 19% on average according to this newer source, which is roughly on par with what we saw from Zen 2 to Zen 3. Previous information I've received from sources really does range quite a lot. Um, I've heard anything from high teens up to around 25%. This is 1T performance. Personally, I don't want to set myself up for huge disappointment and start going to like 30% or anything like that. I'm going to say you know, mid-teens to 20% is quite realistic. On average, obviously, different workloads will scale, well, differently. But I would love the number to be higher, but again, I don't want to get my hopes up. Um, so I'm saying, you know, 20%-ish. 
Adore TV, Jim, had also reported some chip variants were being tested with 1, 2, and 3 megabytes of L2, but for the retail SKUs, yeah, it does seem it's only 1 megabyte. According to Jim's information, and I've had multiple sources now tell me he's correct, there was up to a 7% increase in performance, depending on the workload, the number of threads, and so on, for the 3 megabyte L2. Now, this would obviously increase things such as the size of the die, production costs, and so on. I also can't verify this with another source, but early on, a decently accurate source told me that AMD were testing out higher core count configurations with AM5. I don't actually think that they intended to release them though. I think that this was for internal stimulation only. Take with a huge pinch of salt, but I don't think these were test chips that ever were created. I think they were just internal simulations and benchmarks. I'm also told a couple of different release dates. So let's go over source one. Uh, they told me that Zen 5 3D variants will launch several months after the vanilla chips, and this person has said that we'll probably see CES for the announcement of Strix Point, aka Ryzen 8000, and then it will launch a couple of months later, let's say around March-ish. The Vcash variants will come a little bit later, as I've said earlier, several months later, so around Q4. However, a second source has told me that this information is probably outdated. Instead, they believe that the desktop is going to be more like mid-2024, and mobile is probably going to be closer to Q3. Honestly, I think that this is a more likely release window because, um, well, another source on top of that has told me that they don't think the launch is coming anytime soon for a number of different reasons. I also want to touch on some stuff for Zen 6. I'm going to focus again on desktop because stuff, of course, will differ, especially going forward between desktop, server, and so on. But And things are a lot more in flux here, not only because some of this information could be partially or totally inaccurate, and let's be honest, the design is just so far away, which means it's even more likely to have miscommunication, but because this design is so far away it's not going to launch tomorrow stuff can change during development the scope can change but this is what i've heard so far zen 6 is on the am6 platform it will not be on am5 this will almost certainly at this point support both ddr6 and pcie6 remember zen 5 launches next year and then we're looking at a couple more years on top of that before zen 6 comes to the market so again this is like three four years into the future guys Large changes in architecture, that's very unhelpful I know, but I've not got anything specific. I've heard a few murmurs that I don't really trust, so that's just what I'm going to say for now. Core counts potentially could rise, but it gets a little different, because allegedly in the desktop we could see big dot little. A source told me that the core counts could potentially double, but providing context from numerous other sources, it seems that this could be, let's say, a 16 slash 16 configuration, or something like more like 16 slash eight again this is still up in the air and amd have certainly not decided this stuff at this stage it seems but one thing i have been told is that it's likely going to launch on both 2 and 3 nm with 2 nm for things like server and high-end mobile parts and 3 nm more likely as we've seen for uh zen 5 to be something like desktop which of course zen 5 uses 3 nm for server and 4 nm for desktop i am vastly simplifying things there are things like uh zen 5 dense and uh, mobile stuff and other bits and pieces but just for simplicity's sake um i think on the surface though the big dot little design does make sense amd have recently conducted an interview and applied they have implied it not outright stated the big dot little hybrid designs will pop up in more products and places and the core counts would rise dense cores would also be significantly smaller and they can run at lower clock frequency again we've kind of seen this for intel but to my understanding anyway zen 5 uh, sorry zen 6 it's going to have a very similar architectural design between the big and the little cores the only difference is basically they're dense and they don't run at high clock frequencies. I would take this with a huge grain of salt at this stage, um, but I would not be surprised if we saw hybrid designs for Zen 6 on the desktop. And certainly they're going to continue to push this for mobile solutions. I actually wanted to uh, talk briefly about Sarlacc. I've actually been sitting on this information for ages, but honestly, I've just received so many conflicting reports. I just kind of sat on the information once I became more certain of it because... I don't know, it just, I just kind of did. But uh, basically speaking, I think um, Sarlacc and the Halo chips around it have undergone several revisions. The Halo chip, Sarlacc, 
is just that. It's going to have a high TDP over 100 watts. But most of the conflicting information I've received basically concerns the CPU configuration. So what I am fairly certain about now is it's Zen 5, 16 cores, 32 threads, TSMC 4NM, although some folks are telling me it's 3NM, 20 core AI engines, RDNA 3 Plus. Um, I've spoken about RDNA 3 a couple of times before. It's got a couple of small changes um, that... Uh, basically revolve around things such as incorporating some RDNA 4 features. To my understanding, this is basically floating point support to Salu, and it's essentially being backported to RDNA 3 Plus. But in general, most of the features are the same. So there's going to be uh, 20 workgroup processors, up to 40 compute units, 256-bit LPDDR5X memory, and 32 megabytes Infinity Cache. I've also been told some conflicting information. It's also 64 megabytes. So it's possible that um, either one piece of information is incorrect or they did internal testing with different configurations. I'm uncertain which is the release one. Now, early on, and this is why I was holding back the Report, I basically had a lot of conflicting information about a couple of elements. The first is that I was told it was Zen 5 and uh, Zen 5C, each with eight cores, but it just didn't seem to be true at this stage. Performance is also pretty impressive. Um, basically, it seems to be outperforming cards such as the mobile RTX 3070. It might even be able to go a little bit higher in you know final retail form, especially if you're willing to crank the TDP up. This basically means that, yes, of course, those particular cards, let's say a 3070M, is not exactly going to be impressive by the time Blackwell or RDNA 4 launches, but it basically means that uh, low-end discrete GPUs from the market will essentially become just squeezed just totally out of existence, at least in most situations. I'm certain that those cards won't fully disappear because some folks are gonna have older CPUs. For example, let's say in a couple of years time, Zen 3 is gonna be older and you're still gonna to wanna, to, for example, replace an old broken graphics card or something like that. But if you're buying a new mobile solution or something like this, this is going to essentially render those pointless to purchase. So then, rounding out the video, I filmed that there will be a very interesting race between NVIDIA, AMD, and of course Intel, but for numerous different reasons. NVIDIA have, at the moment, of course, mostly focused on GPUs, but in the data center, they're slowly creating their own CPUs, and their own ecosystem is thriving. Obviously, they're now worth basically one trillion US dollars, and there's a lot of money to be had. AMD's uh, acquisition of Zillinux is arguably one of the most important moves that they've made, and it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how future Zen architectures will incorporate these technologies, particularly when we're dealing with things such as APUs. The desktop as an, uh, as an ecosystem is also starting to change a lot. It's going to be fascinating not just to see what happens with the highest end products, let's use today's equivalents, the 13900K and stuff like the 7950X 3D, but the mid and low end tiers, what's going to happen with embedded solutions. I think that the next couple of years in tech is going to just be very much a wild west and I think it's very possible that in five years time things will look very different. With that said guys, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. It's YouTube and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.